Hi everybody, my name is Dylan, and uh, you're probably finding this video on my rockets. I'm also building Iron Man suits. Um, if you're new to my channel, check it out. I'm doing some pretty cool stuff. Hit subscribe. But let's get on to what I want to talk to you about. What I want to talk to you guys about today are these little doodads. These guys right here are, this is a sonic no or supersonic nozzle, and this is a sonic nozzle. Uh, I'm going to come back to these and talk to them really quick. But uh, what I did is I took these and I, um, I put them, I, <laughs> I 3D printed them out of resin, um, and they have threads in them, which is awesome that you can do this with a resin printer. And they screw right on to the end of a uh, little air blast for a um, air compressor. And uh, I imaged shock diamonds um, using a type of um, imaging called, I had to go look it up because I couldn't remember the name. It's called Schlieren photography. S C H L. I-E-R-E-N. And uh, I'm not going to um, talk too much about this because I didn't get a whole lot of b-roll of it, unfortunately. But I am going to link to a video from Veritasium um, who has a, uh, a really great video on it and how it works. But essentially what you do is you take a parabolic mirror, so a mirror that has a curve, and you have a little tiny pinpoint of light over here next to the camera lens. And then the light comes out and it spreads out and it hits the mirror and it comes back and it focuses. And then you put the camera right after the focus point. And then what happens is that tiny little bit of light, even though it's so small, is a lot of light coming in. And then because it's coming out straight and then coming back, if it hits anything in the air that's a little bit of a different density, it causes the light to bend slightly as it comes back. So it allows you to image some things that are um, you couldn't normally see with the naked eye. And that is like these guys right here. So the first one I'm gonna show you is the supersonic nozzle. But here you can see that there's a shock diamond forming out of the end of this thing, which is really awesome. You couldn't see this if you were just looking at the thing. I mean, you can kind of see it a little bit um, if you just sprayed it in the air and you had some light behind it and it was kind of in a dark spot, you could see it a little bit. But um, it's pretty cool that you're able to see this. So here is a great spot where you can see a full shock diamond pattern appearing. And uh, I want to show you I want to show you this image right here, which is a Raptor test engine from SpaceX being tested on the stand. Now, because um, this is a hot, that's a high energy uh, rocket engine, and it's also burning methane, so it's mostly uh, water that's coming out of there. It's both giving off light because it's hot, um, it's, ra it's radiating light, visible light, and um, it's see-through because it's, uh, it's methane and oxygen, and that burns really clean, and you don't have a bunch of soot in there. Um, so you're actually able to see the shock um, pattern really clearly and that's what this pattern is right here and you can see that mine lines up and it looks almost exactly like it it's almost the exact same pattern which is really cool uh what this is is a standing wave so um if you're following if you found my channel you probably you've probably seen some of the um videos from like uh, everyday astronaut or stuff like that uh where he talks about this but essentially what happens is the um the fluid gets pressed down, it hits the speed of sound, and that's the converging part, and this is really weird. It comes in like this, and it goes like this. It's called a bell-shaped nozzle. You probably have seen it. Um, if you look here, this is in the shape of a bell-shaped nozzle. If I can get it to focus, I think you can kind of see that. That is a, a bell-shaped nozzle. So, um, so what it does is the air is pressed down and it hits the speed of sound in the very center of the um, shape. And then as it comes out, it, um, so it's really weird. Until it hits the speed of sound, if you make it into a smaller diverging section, it goes faster and faster. But then once it's going to speed of sound, the opposite happens. So if you make it bigger, it goes faster. It's very weird. I don't really entirely understand it. Um, but, uh, that's kind of what happens. I'm gonna say right now, this video isn't a full video on like rocket science. I am planning a video on that. Um, I'm working on some of the equations. I have figured out the equations of um, of these nozzles. Um, and that's kind of what I wanna talk about because it's like my first real success with rockets and understanding how to design them and make them. I'm gonna show you the sonic nozzle. So this nozzle right here doesn't have the um, diverging section on it. It's just chopped off at the throat. So this, and actually, I'll show you right this this little this little video right here is the, me setting up the mirror, and you'll see when I get it in, it gets really bright. That's because I hit the focal point just right. And here, right there. You can see the um, the shock uh, expansion right there. And this one's much different because this one is pluming out and um, 
and that's and the reason that is happening is because there's energy left in the system, right? So it's crushed down. But then if you expand it out, you would get more of that energy and you get that really stream. And if you do it perfectly, which I was able to do because I, I solved the equations and actually it's mostly like lookup tables and stuff. It's, it's you actually don't have to solve that many equations to design these things. You just got to understand what you're doing. But um, you would then expand it out and you'd capture more of that energy and then you get a really clean flow that comes straight out of the nozzle. This has energy left in the system so it's pluming out and then it hits the atmosphere and the atmosphere crushes it back down and then you get another shock pattern, which I think this is really interesting. I haven't seen anyone actually talk about this on the internet yet, so I might be the first. Um, maybe someone's written scientific papers about it. I'm sure I'm not the first to discover it, but it plumes out and then you get this shock pattern, but that shock pattern is a lot tighter, which leads me to think it's less efficient because the shock um, itself is actually a loss of energy. Um, it's not ideal. So the fact that these, these shock diamonds on this sonic nozzle are stacked up makes me think that this nozzle is, um, is not as efficient as the supersonic nozzle. Another thing to say is that obviously because this should be obvious, sort of, if, if the exhaust coming out of this is going faster than this one, this one produces more thrust. Um, I am planning to do some thrust testing of these nozzles, I just haven't done it yet, and that's gonna come in a future video. So the last thing I wanna show you guys here, just so you get an idea and to kind of drive this home, is the CAD of these, these, um, these uh, nozzles. So here's the threads that you see, and then I had these mounting points on here because I thought I was gonna mount these and test these, and I ended up just being easier to hold them in my hand to get the video, but, I'm gonna turn an analysis on and we're gonna slice it in half. And here you can see the um, converging and diverging section. So it gets crushed down, the air gets crushed down, it hits the speed of sound at this nozzle, and then you'll see how little of, a, uh, of an outward movement that is. And that's because this is, I'm gonna give you just a very little brief explanation of how these rocket nozzles work. It's the size of the nozzle is um, the opening of the nozzle after you've choked it down. The ratio of the throat to the, the expansion is proportional to the pressure inside the chamber versus what you're venting to, which in this case is atmosphere, it's 14 PSI, and then my compressor is running at about 80 PSI. And that's a pretty small gradient, so you don't have that much energy in the system, so you can't expand it all the way out um, like you could on a SpaceX rocket. Those ones have huge ones. They have a tiny little nozzle and a big old bell, and that's because their chamber pressure is like 3,000 PSI. So they're able to really expand that out, but it makes the same shape, except theirs is going much faster. Theirs is probably going closer to like Mach 10, the exhaust. This one is going like Mach 1.7 something, the exhaust coming out of this. So that crushes it down, and then you'll notice these gentle slopes. That's in order to keep the, um, the flow going as laminar and smoothly as possible. And then, um, so that's where the slopes are, and then the rocket shape at the end comes, and if you're doing it perfectly, it comes and points out and tries to get the exhaust going straight out, um, not like sending it off at some kind of tangent that's not the direction of the exhaust. So that's how these nozzles are working. And then if I switch over to the Sonic one, You'll see all I did was just cut that right at the throat and then um, test it that way because I wanted to see what that looked like as well. This is pretty cool stuff. Uh, I don't think a whole lot of people have imaged uh, rocket nozzles using this type of photography, even though this photography, even though this photography has been around for a long time. Um, I know there is a couple of academic papers written on this, but I think I might be the first YouTuber um, to talk about this. So. Yeah, like I said, this isn't a full video on um, rocket science. Uh, the equations that I'm using to design these nozzles is right, but right now my equations on the thrust that these are producing is telling me that the thrust is too high. I'm sure I just have some numbers off, um, but I'm planning a fuller video on really how to go deep into the engineering of um, rocket nozzles because um, there's a lot of like higher level stuff on uh, YouTube. Like I said, I talked about the everyday astronaut and uh, his videos are great. And Scott Manley, he's, he's great too, but if you really actually want to design your own rocket nozzle, you don't really need to know about um, the stage flow combustion and all this stuff because you're not probably doing that. You're probably using something like if you're using a liquid rocket engine like what I'm designing, you're just using a pressure fed engine which means it's just under pressure and pushing it in. So what you really need to understand is like nozzles and injectors and stuff like that. And that's what I'm researching right now and, uh, and designing and doing stuff with. So my next step is to figure out and make sure I'm getting the thrust completely dialed in on these guys. Um, I'm working with another YouTuber to help me with that. Uh, he's huge, I'm not. But um, yeah, that, that's what's coming. Um, like I said, be sure to subscribe if you're into this kind of thing because uh, that's that's where I'm going with it. And I um, hope you guys think this is cool. I think it's pretty awesome. Um, <laughs> I might not be showing my excitement as much as I was. I was pretty giddy in the garage when I finally got these images. I mean, just look at that right there. Bam. Let's just watch that one more time, shall we? 
Yeah, there you go. And it's cool how it's like just stays stuck to my hand, right? You can sort of see one thing I didn't say is you can see a mirror, like for some reason the exhaust is showing up in the mirror um, too. So you're seeing a double image. So keep that in mind as we watch this for the last time. Yeah, I just think that's super cool. You can do that in a garage, but just an air compressor. So one final note, I thought it'd be cool to make uh, attachments for air compressors that you could screw them in, get these cut out of brass, and then you would have for blowing away stuff in your garage, which is what you use these things for blowing away dirt. You'd have the highest efficiency use of that air coming out of there because it'd be going as fast as it possibly can. Um, given the, the, the ratio of the compressor to the uh, atmosphere. That would be a cool product. I might do that at some point. Yeah, that's all I got for you guys. Um, not a super long video. I just want to show you my findings and what I had going on. And I think that's pretty cool. I hope you did too. Bye.